I designed these adorable towel topper rings whenever I was searching for something that was modern and I couldn't find one so I decided to make one up. They are surprisingly very easy to make and super cute. I can't wait to show you how to make them today so stay tuned! For a full list of the supplies used see the description box below. We will begin by making a slip knot, leaving a long tail of about 12 inches or so. We will be using this tail later to sew the button down. Start by loosely chaining 8. Turn so that the back bump of the chain is facing you. Skip one chain and make a single crochet chain one in the next space. Skip a stitch and make a single crochet chain one. Skip the next space, make a single crochet chain one, and then the very last stitch make a single crochet. You should have four single crochets when you go back and count. For row two, you will chain one and turn and skip the first single crochet. Now, in the normal linen stitch, you would work in the chain one spaces, but I'm going to work down into the chain that I skipped in the foundation chain. I'm doing this so that there won't be any gaps. It makes it look cleaner. This is considered a drop stitch. So chain one, skip the next single crochet and make a single crochet down in the foundation chain that we skipped earlier. Chain one, skip the next single crochet and do the last drop stitch down in the foundation chain that we skipped. Chain one, skip the next single crochet and put a single crochet in the chain that we skipped at the very, very beginning. This will conclude row two. You should have four single crochets. Chain one and turn. Skip the single crochet and put a single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, put a single crochet in the chain one that we made before we turned on the last row. You will want to chain loosely in the chains before you turn in each row because you're going to have to work back into them. Chain one and turn. In every chain one space, you're going to make a single crochet and chain one and then repeat all the way across. Make sure that you put a single crochet in the chain one that you made before you turned from the previous row below. Now we are going to continue this pattern until it makes a certain measurement. My rule of thumb is about seven inches and I will show you here this is a good length for me. I started out too long on this one and I had to shorten it, but it's about seven inches or about 17 centimeters. Continue in this fashion until your piece measures about seven inches. I will meet you when I am at that point. Okay, so as you can see, my piece is now seven inches. And it looks about the same as the other one that I have already made. This is where I will add the wooden ring. I got these rings from Hobby Lobby and I will measure them so that you know about what size to buy if you choose to buy them elsewhere. They're about three inches or about seven centimeters. Now we will begin to add the wooden ring. Chain one and turn. Take your wooden ring and place it between your working yarn and your hook. Put your hook through the ring and pull through a loop, essentially slip stitching. 
Move the ring out of the way and turn your work to where you can see the stitches. Put your hook through the front loop only. Draw up a loop. Move the ring back between your working yarn and your hook and draw through both loops on your hook. Move the ring to the right. Go through the front loop only of the next stitch and pull up a loop. Move the ring back between your working yarn and your hook and draw through both loops. We're going to continue this process all the way across. Moving the ring out of the way, go through the front loop only, pull up a loop, push the ring back between your working yarn and your hook, and go through both loops. You're making an anchor stitch through the front loop only, and then finishing off by making a single crochet through the ring. I like using the front loop only because it makes a nice ribbing, but you could realistically go through both loops. Make sure that you don't forget the chain one at the end of the row. You should have eight single crochet in the wooden ring when you're finished. Now I'm going to leave myself a bit of tail to weave in and fasten off. Now we're going to add our button using the long tail that we began with. I'm just going to take a yarn needle and bring the yarn to the center. I'm going to place my button fairly close to the edge because otherwise it won't look right. You need to decide which side is your front and your back. To me, this is the back. The other side has the nice ribbing I talked about. Make sure that you place your button on the same side as what you consider the front side or the right side. Place it at the edge so that when you button your button through, it goes to the back side. I'm going to thread my yarn towards the center. With this particular yarn, you have to be sure that you don't actually go through the yarn because it has a polyfill center and it won't go through. It's very challenging, but it's worth it. You could also realistically use a smaller hook. Once you get it in the center, just sew your button on like you normally would. Once you get it sewn on, make sure you bring your tail back to the underside so that you can hide your tail. Now just secure it however you see fit. I'm going to just cut off the excess here and glue it down with some fabric glue so that it doesn't come apart. I did not create a buttonhole for this particular project because the chain one spaces will work just fine. I count up about five rows from the wooden ring and find a spot in the center and I just use that as the hole. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put mine right in here. It doesn't really matter right now. It'll probably change once I actually put it on a handle. So here I want you to notice something. When you button the button, it makes it a little concave. That is actually going to be very helpful for us. You will see here that this wooden bead fits very nicely right in that spot. When you are having this hang on your handle, it will be very helpful 
for that to have a place to go so that your tassel doesn't pooch out. So I don't do anything fancy when I make my tassels. I simply use my fingers. It's about three to four inches, I would say, if you were wanting to use a piece of cardboard. I'm going to wrap my fingers about nine times to make my tassel, but you can do it any amount of time that you want. Just keep in mind that the more times you wrap, the fatter your tassel will be. And the fatter your tassel is, the more it will poke out. I think nine is a good number. I'm also going to cut another length. I don't really measure. I'd say it's probably about the same length, maybe a little longer. I'm going to take that extra length of yarn and make a small tassel. I'm going to find a spot just above the bead where I want it to rest, and that's where I'm going to place it to anchor it down. So find the concave area again so you can get an idea of where to put your bead, and then look above it and try to find the center. So here I'm showing you that I'm going in two loops that are pretty well parallel to each other but not exactly the same stitch so i won't be going around a single crochet so i'm going to pull those loops up so i'm just going to pull it through and then i'm basically pretending like it's a single tassel i'm going to pull both loops through that loop there I'm going to gently pull. I don't want this to be tight at all. If you make this tight, it will look odd. So I'm just very loosely making that little tassel. You want it to be about in the center there, and you can see it, it pretty well is. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You can't see it very well here, but I'm about to use an F hook to join the bead to the tassel. So grab your bead and put it on your hook. Then take those tails and pull it through the bead. Gently pull. You do not want this to be too tight. So I'm just slightly pushing it towards the top to where it will gently rest in that concave area. Now take the ends and spread them apart. Get your tassel tails and fold them in half. Place them between the two tails and gently tie around the tassel tails. You want to do this very gently. If you do it too tight, it'll push the bead up and make it pooch out. So do this first one very gently. And then the second one, you can tie it tight. Just be careful that you don't accidentally push that bead up. And obviously, since these tails want to separate, I'm going to have to tie another piece around the top to hold it together. There are a lot of ways that you can do this, but this is the way that I do it because I feel like I can control the size of it better. So I'm going to tie it one time in the front, then I'm going to flip the tassel to where I'm towards the back. And I'm going to tie it twice to knot it closed. Then I'm just going to play with it and shape it and see how I want it to look. Then you're going to want to straighten out the tails of your tassel and find a good spot and cut the tails evenly. Now at this point, normally what I would do is take it to an iron and iron it. The steam from the iron would help relax these threads. But since I'm in the middle of a tutorial, I'm not going to take it to the ironing board. I feel like the tassel ends are still a little too long yet. I don't want it to hang down. So I'm going to look at the other one and measure it. It appears to be about two inches from the bottom of the bead to the bottom of the tassel. So I'm going to make mine 
a little bit shorter. Mine measures a little bit too long. Now you would take your ends and weave them in with that smaller hook. And like I said, I would iron that tassel down. This is a relatively quick project and it is so cute. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.